Are you headed to your first Nerf tournament and you don't know what you should be bringing? I got you covered with the top five things you should bring with you to every Nerf tournament. Let's get into it. This list is assuming you've got your basic loadouts, your, your standard gear you're gonna run with and your main blaster. So starting off with number five, we've got extra darts. Obviously darts are important, but extra darts is something you may not think about. Now at the Foam Pro Tour, myself and my teammates brought a bunch of extra darts so that we could warm up in the morning and practice our shots, get things kind of feeling right and dialed in and not worry about mangling any darts, especially for you know high crush flywheel users, your darts are going to get damaged and in a tournament you probably want darts that are in the best condition they can be. So consider bringing some extra darts to use to warm up in the morning before your matches. Or if you've got a long break between matches, uh, maybe when you're warming up again for that next match, you've got some extra darts to burn through to kind of just get that feel back and kind of get back into the swing of it so you're not going into a match cold. Number four, secondary gear. Now this is kind of a broad topic to encompass. Now. I know we mentioned that this isn't talking about your main gear, which is what you would probably bring to your average event. This is a list of extra things that may get more use in a competitive event than they would in a regular event. Uh, things like your knee pads, because the way most cover is in these events and these tournaments is they're much lower. So you're probably gonna spend a lot of time on the ground. So if you don't have a good pair of knee pads, definitely invest in them, your knees, will thank you, trust me, so worth it. And if you're gonna be going hard and running and sliding, things to consider getting as well are things like slide pants or cleats. I highly recommend cleats. It is something that I feel like I can't play without now. It, you just feel more secure when you're running and you can get a better grip on things. And I really, really wanna emphasize that, that it can be a big plus to have a good pair of cleats that you are comfortable in. Definitely don't pick up a pair of cleats right beforehand and not break them in. You want to always break in a good pair of cleats before you use them. It is worth the time. Just wear them around the house, uh, wear them in the backyard. Just spend time kind of working them in so that they are nice and comfy before the tournament. One last thing to talk about on the secondary gear part is gloves. I always wear gloves when I'm playing in competitive games. And there's a few reasons. Some blasters uh, can get uncomfortable and kind of dig into certain spots on your hand uh, if you're using them over and over and over. Others, for me, like when you're going hard and it's hot out and you're just pushing yourself, you start to sweat. Your, your body does that. It's a thing that happens. It's a good thing. But it happens, and that can lead to not having the most secure grip on your blaster, which isn't so great when you wanna have the most control possible to put your shots on target and not slip and drop something or lose control of something, or you go to grab a mag to reload and something slips out of your hand. No, gloves are a good investment. I personally wear baseball gloves, uh, batting gloves, not you know a mitt, but... Uh, you can find good gloves from all over the place. I would recommend thinner gloves. You don't want something that's going to add a whole bunch of bulk to whatever uh, you're holding. So I'd, I'd try and find something thin and lightweight and uh, go with that. It's definitely something to consider. Number three, the rules and a field layout printout. This is something that obviously you should know the rules of a tournament before you go into it, but it is so worthwhile to have at least one set of the rules printed out for easy reference. Sometimes you can kind of forget one of those little details or side case rules and you want to be able to look that up quickly or reference it if need be. And even more important, that field layout printout. I cannot overstate how valuable that is. You can sit and stand on the sidelines and look at a field and talk with your teammates as you're watching matches all you want, but being able to have a sheet and you look down at that sheet and you say, okay, you're going here and I'm going here. And if there's someone here, we're gonna do this. And just being able to visualize like that is so valuable. It's something that I, as I said, I cannot overstate it. So please consider printing something like that out. It will pay its dividends for your team uh, well over. So definitely 
make that happen. It's not too hard to print things out these days. Uh, I actually carried a binder at the Foam Pro Tour with all of our strats in it um, and a few blank maps so that we could adjust and redo things and talk about things on the fly if need be. Worthwhile, definitely a good uh, low cost investment. Number two, a field repair kit. This should be pretty obvious. Uh, if you have something go wrong with your blaster or anything, you want to be able to fix it between matches. Obviously, you're not going to, you know, bust out the screwdrivers and pop up on a blaster during a match, but in between matches, you certainly can and should. So anything from, you know, spare O-rings to your standard toolkits to extra springs to uh, a secondary uh, flywheel cage that you can just hot swap in, all kinds of various things for the blasters you and your team are running, having extra components or repair kits and stuff like that on hand is a definite, definite plus. Uh, extra points, if you're driving to a tournament and not flying in, Bringing a folding table is awesome. Stuff that you can just drop onto a table and you can start working on your blaster, not worry about losing stuff in grass or having to, uh, you know, work on a blaster in your lap, which nobody likes doing that. It's not fun. All it takes is, you know, up oh, by sneeze to gets everywhere. Your blaster's all of a sudden in a much worse state than it was. So if you're driving in and you can get a folding table, definitely fit that in and bring it with you. It'll also be nice for when you want to eat, you want to just place things on stuff. There's a whole bunch of extra value to there, but yeah, repair kits, repair parts, all that extra kind of stuff, definitely, definitely important. Now, the number one thing, uh, that's, a, that's two, number one thing that you should definitely bring with you to every competitive event you go to, spare blasters as many spare blasters as you can. Seriously, uh, this is something that, it's the reason it's number one. Uh, most competitive formats allow you to have extra blasters chronographed and registered. So you can bring those to your spawn and uh, if something goes wrong with your blaster on the field, you can go and grab it. Whether you have to take a respawn to do it or you can run back and grab it and come back in. Regardless, having those available is one of the most important things I cannot say enough about. Uh, I Seriously, I've lost count of the number of blasters I've seen fail during competitive events. You are pushing your blaster hard. You're pushing yourself hard. You're running, you're sliding, you're diving, you're doing things you may not normally do in a regular event. Your blaster is going to take abuse. And it may not work, it may not function, something may go wrong with it. So having those blasters in your spawn, ready to go, is so valuable. Because if you're without a blaster, you're not much value to your team compared to when you do have a blaster that functions. So seriously, bring at least one. At least one spare blaster that you're comfortable with. So spend time practicing with that extra blaster as well. And if you can bring more than one extra blaster and the rules permit it, do so. Seriously, if you can fit it in your luggage, do so. Uh, it's just one of those things. Odds are a blaster is going to fail on your team at some point during the tournament. So make sure you're not without one. And to take that a step further as an extra, if you have extra gear that's similar to the gear you're wearing, why not bring that too? I brought two of my belt rigs to the Foam Pro Tour, and during one of the matches when I dove and rolled, uh, I broke one of the mag holders on my back. So thankfully I had that spare rig, and in between I was able to go grab it, pop it on, and I was set. I wasn't down a piece of gear because I did something stupid and broke it. So please consider those things. If you have them available, definitely, definitely bring them. And this is, again, stuff that you should bring with you. We haven't even talked about prep beforehand. That's, that's a whole separate video. We'll do that at some point in the future. But let me know if there's anything you think I should have talked about or things that you bring in particular. I want to hear all about them. We've got Ragnar Toberfest coming up in just a couple weeks, and I hope to see all of you there. Can't wait to compete with so many of you on the field, and I'm looking forward to it and the continued growth the competitive side of our hobby. 
So your thoughts down below, and as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.